So for the November 2020 Great Film Throwback Day, this is going to be one of the first of a couple of my monthly segments this month that are going to be featuring films that involve a historic event or a very well-known person in history. And I have to say that I was very excited to see this specific film because I have always known that it is one of the most well-praised and beloved films when it comes to some of the truly greatest films of all time. It is actually the 1982 Best Picture winner, directed by Richard Attenborough. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, it should, especially if you are a Jurassic Park fan, because that is John Hammond. Yes, let me repeat that. John Hammond from Jurassic Park directed the 1982 film Gandhi, of course starring the great Sir Ben Kingsley. And there, and there also are some very well-known actors in this film alongside Ben Kingsley, but honestly, now that I have seen this film, I will truthfully say that this movie is all about Ben Kingsley's performance. And he even won the Academy Award for Best Actor for this film, and of course it was very well deserved. So when it comes to Gandhi, that is a name that you know, especially if you learned about world history in school. The famed wise man who believed in the concept of nonviolent protest for the sake of liberating the country of India from the British government in the 1940s. So we get a very good look at Gandhi's life. Basically, when he starts out as a young lawyer in his early 20s, after graduating from school in England, he, like a lot of other Indians who actually came from India to the United Kingdom, once they had officially gotten their degrees from school, they would actually be dispersed to a couple of colonies in Africa that Britain had control over, and he was sent to South Africa. And his first big encounter, or at least the movie says, where he sees the fact that people who are not white are treated very unfairly is when he's actually sitting in a first-class seat on a train in South Africa, and he is literally thrown off the train because he has brown skin. It is then when he really goes deep to see that there is so much unfairness when it comes to people of color, and this is when he officially starts to make a movement in regards to getting freedom and equality for people who are non-white. And the way that he goes about it is not about violence. It is not about toppling over establishments and government. No. It's a matter of just letting them know that we are equal to you, we are people as well, and we deserve to have the exact same rights as you. And the way that he builds up his name, the fact that people just follow him because he is probably one of the most selfless well-known icons in all of history, the fact that a movement is just built behind him and he just still manages to keep his modesty and his humbleness. As a matter of fact, when he sees some of the actions that his followers take, he gets very upset sometimes if violence breaks out, which causes him to fast and hurt himself. And people are saying, why are you doing this to yourself? And he says, I only do this because it is necessary. This is the only way that things are going to be done the right way. And he even continues to do that when he goes back to India and he does in fact fight for the independence of India, and when he finally does reach that point and the British leave, things don't get any better because there is now a religious slash political divide between the Hindus and the Muslims of India, and that is also the time when the nation of Pakistan is born, and all the way to his death he just tries to not only find peace for himself, but to find peace for the collective of the entire human race. So, what did I think about this movie? Honestly, I really loved this movie. And the reason why I loved it is not just because of Ben Kingsley's performance. As a matter of fact, I actually had a conversation with my wife, and I've even seen this in a couple of comments throughout time on YouTube, where people say that Gandhi is a movie that could never be made today unless you cast an Indian actor. Well, the funny thing is, Ben Kingsley does in fact have some Indian blood in him, and that's the reason why they chose him. But the real reason why I love this film so much is because it reminds me of the golden age of Hollywood. Based on movies that I have been watching here on my channel for the great film Throwback Day, seeing some of the greatest epic films from the 1930s to the 1960s, 
when I was starting to watch movies from the late 60s all the way to the 1980s, and of course even beyond that, there never seemed to be that era of epicness and true moving films that you got from the golden age of Hollywood. Gandhi dives deep into history and gives us that true golden age feel. The beautiful landscapes of India, the powerful acting, the drama in the slow burning moments of this film, because yes, this film is not filled with action. It is not filled with incredible special effects. This movie is character-based, it is story-based, and you just get enveloped in this incredible story that truly is an epic story, but told about the most simplest and quietest and humblest of men. And I really appreciate Mohandas Gandhi seeing this specific film, even though I know there's so much more of his story, I really did appreciate that. It also is very similar to one of the greatest epic films of all time, the 1962 film Lawrence of Arabia, because it has those beautiful landscapes. It has a fantastic score. This movie was scored by the great Ravi Shankar, the famous Indian musician who basically became an icon in America thanks to George Harrison from the Beatles, who got so inspired and even brought some of his music to some of the later Beatles albums. I think one of the most well-known songs that incorporates the Indian music sound is Within You, Without You from Sgt. Pepper. It's a beautiful song. I highly recommend that you listen to it. And it was just so great to know that he got the opportunity to score a film that is all about his roots and his own nation. There also are some other great actors in this movie. Candace Bergen is in this movie. Richard Griffiths from Harry Potter is in this movie. We even have a powerful performance from Rohini Hatangari, who plays Gandhi's wife, and I absolutely loved her performance. As a matter of fact, there is such a silent but powerful moment in this film between her and Gandhi. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it kind of does spoil the movie. Because, because even though this movie has been out for over 30 years, I still feel that I shouldn't give too much away about this film in terms of the movie itself. Also, a person who I know, Roshan Seth, who plays one of Gandhi's advisors. That face was so familiar to me, and then I realized that even though it's a terrible movie, Movie. He was in the John claude Van Damme movie Street Fighter as Dr. Dalzim, so I just found it so funny that I actually managed to put two and two together right when I saw this actor's face. And again, the other performances are great, but Ben Kingsley just stands out. And again, like Lawrence of Arabia, he was an unknown actor at the time. Nobody knew who he was. He was doing some theater. He was even doing some television shows. But this was Ben Kingsley's first film, much like the fact that Lawrence of Arabia was Peter O'Toole's first film. And I will say that the fact that this movie reminds me of a greater time when movies were not about the special effects, were not about the crazy gross-out comedy, were not about these truly mindless moments, the fact that we got a beautiful story, the fact that we got brilliant acting, the fact that there was so much wonderful production value put into this film to tell some really important history and also send the message that if you want to make a difference, it's not about violence or going to extremes. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of us today can learn a great deal from that, even though having a movement is still very important in regards to making change, but it's a matter of doing it in a way that people are truly going to revere you and listen to you and give you those opportunities for change. So I think that the film Gandhi couldn't be one of the more important films to watch right now. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you do. Is this a movie that I would like to see again? Well, like some of those great Golden Age of Hollywood films, it's a wonderful movie, deserves all the accolades that it got, but it just doesn't always have that extreme rewatchability. But I would watch this movie again, absolutely. And is this a movie that I would like to own on DVD? Part of me feels that it would be an important movie to have in my DVD collection, but I'm not necessarily sure 
if I would run out and get it almost immediately if I found it. Like, if I found it on a discount rack, if it was really being sold for a cheap price, there might be a chance that I would pick it up. But it is definitely a movie that I am so happy that I finally saw. And I think out of all of the films that I have watched for the Great Film Throwback Day these past couple of years, I think it's one of the best ones that I have seen so far. So I am going to be giving Gandhi a very strong three and a half stars out of four. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please leave your comments in the box below and let's discuss Gandhi. And I will see you in the next one. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. If you're new here and want to see more of what my channel has to offer, please click on the link to my last video or hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of my uploads. Content of all sorts is posted here quite often, so trust me, you do not want to fall behind. I will see you in the comments, and actions speak louder than words.